Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm back with another Word Study Wednesday. We are taking over this hashtag over on Instagram, hashtag Word Study Wednesday. Uh, so join in with me if you are creating cards or journaling entries or Bible journaling entries, whatever it might be as you do your own word studies, please use that hashtag um, so we can be inspired by what you're doing and we can just form kind of a community around this study time. I've been getting so many messages from you guys that you are excited to be joining in doing this, sharing some of the things that you're learning. I've had a couple of you say that you're doing this as part of your homeschool curriculum with your kiddos. So you're getting, you know, language study and artistic time. I'm just super pumped for, to see how this is growing and evolving over the weeks. So um, I am working with the word focus uh, journaling cards from Open Journey. I will have these linked down below for you guys. Uh, she has a variety of different sets and sizes. So depending on what you want to do, I'll have those linked down below. I'm also gonna link the um, playlist. So if you want to get caught up on the four cards that we've created so far, um, you can check that out. I'm having so much fun making connections between words we've already studied and the new words. I will share that with you today. Um, I have some study notes to share with you guys. So thankfully I had kind of pulled together everything to do the front of this card. Um, and it was gonna be relatively simple because I did some hardcore studying for today's word fire. So um, I've started a little notebook and this is where I'm going to be uh, kind of keeping all my notes. You can take notes on the back of these cards. You could do it on the front of the cards too if you didn't want to do the artistic part. Um, but I obviously had a ton of notes so I need some extra space. Um, for the back of the cards I have been doing a separate card that I can attach in case I get super messy on the front and I'm keeping it very simple for the back of the card. I'm only using one of the verses from the front and then I'm doing the transliteration so the word in its original language whether that's Greek or Hebrew um, I've gone ahead and started adding the pronunciation just for my own um, records I put the definition and then sometimes I'll make a little note maybe something that stood out to me um, I very easily could have put all my notes in here so you could do like a waterfall style or like a tip in type flip up if you had a lot of notes you want to put on your cards um, and then I'll put the Strong's concordance number whether that's Greek or Hebrew on here, which you'll see towards the end of the video. Um, but as I was studying the word fire, oh my gosh, you guys, I had so much fun. So um, Ingrid has here the Greek version of the word fire. But when I looked up um, these verses, there was a combination of Greek and Hebrew. Uh, so if you were going to use one of the Hebrew versions of the word fire, you could always add that Hebrew word on the front as well. And so I'm going to be sharing, I'm, this is the new Hope and Encouragement Bible from Dayspring. I'll have this link down below. I wasn't gonna, quite sure what I was going to do with this particular Bible yet since I have a study Bible, but I think I'm going to use this one for my word studies. Um, and so I've started kind of highlighting the verses that I'm studying and that kind of thing. So Starting out with the word fire seems pretty basic, right? Definition, fiery, fire, literally or figuratively, especially lightning. Um, we see fire all throughout the Bible in so many different ways. And so starting off with the first verse that, um, or first passage that Ingrid gave us was Leviticus 6, 12, 13, which I have here. It says, uh, meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning, the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offering on it. He will then burn the fat of the peace offerings on it. Remember the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. So we see this theme throughout the Old Testament of using fire for these burnt offerings. This was the time of the law before, you know, now that we have Christ came, died, was resurrected, um, resurrected, and now we have that as our sacrifice. But in the Old Testament, they had to do burnt offerings. And so as I started, I started with that passage to look at first. And so actually the word is a Hebrew word for the fire that is used here in Leviticus, which is ash. Um, but it's the same, um, it means the same as the Greek version. 
there were some notes in the Strong's Concordance um, kind of addressing some of the different types of fire that you see with that word. Um, flames, supernatural fire, usually accompanying a theophany. So think about the burning bush um, and those times, instances in the Old Testament where we see a fire representing um, theophany, which is a uh, vision of Christ. Typically when you are seeing um, a vision like the, the of the Lord in the Old Testament, it's actually Christ that they're seeing um, in the Old Testament, which is a whole nother study you could go down. Um, cooking fire, altar fire, God's anger. Um, and so this passage, so I went through my Strong's, or not Strong's, um, Blue Letter Bible app to look up some of the notes and things. Uh, Side note, I do plan on doing a Tip Tuesday next week specifically dedicated to how I use um, like the Logos app, the Blue Letter Bible app, the Strong's Concordance, a few different resources for a study like this. Uh, I have an older video that I've been referencing you guys to, um, but it's a little convoluted. There's a lot of other product in that video. And so I wanna kind of scrap that one and just do a Tip Tuesday um, dedicated to how to do a word study. So that'll be coming next Tuesday. But um, the notes for this passage in Leviticus um, explains that the importance uh, that the priests keep the fires for the holy sacrifices always burning. In the same way, we must keep the Holy Spirit fire within us burning at all times. Be a good housekeeper, tend the fire. So what I'm going to share with you here is the verse that I actually ended up recording on my card is New Testament. We see um, the Holy Spirit coming with Tongue, tongues like flames of fire. And that is how the Holy Spirit is delivered to us. So um, there was lots of connections between the Old Testament burnt offerings and those fires to the New Testament fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire that we have within us. It was so interesting to me. Um, and so you could do a full study just on um, the burnt offerings and, you know, kind of what all that entails and why they had to go through it and why it was a specific way. But um, I went ahead and thought, okay, let me look at a few of the other verses and see um, how fire is used in those references because it's used in a few different ways um, throughout the Bible. So I jumped over to Acts uh, chapter two, verses three through four, um, which I have here. So here in Acts, um, this is the time of Pentecost. This is after um, Christ's death and resurrection. He then spends 40 days on uh, earth, continuing to minister to his disciples before he ascends. After Christ ascends, there is a 10 day period between his ascension and Pentecost, the arrival of the Holy Spirit. And so that's kind of where we're at here in Acts chapter two, um, is, the, the, is the Holy Spirit coming upon um, the people. So it so says suddenly, I'm gonna start on verse two because this is where I had a connection with a previous word. Uh, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So we, I kind of dug in and started looking at this one. So here is the transliteration um, for this version of fire, which is the one that she has on the card. Um, Poor G4442, this is the Strong's Concordance number. If you're not sure what that is, again, I will have a tip Tuesday next week, um, kind of diving into Strong's Concordance. But uh, you'll see similar definition, fiery fire, literally or figuratively, especially lightning. Um, we see that from God, right? Fire coming down from the heavens. Um, and so then we start making the connections between Old Testament and New Testament. Real quick, though, I want to point out that um, word from a couple weeks ago. So when we did the word um, breathe or breath, breath, uh, I made a little side note about why I did the dove here. And that's referencing the Holy Spirit. And that's because we see again and again, the Holy Spirit as um, breath or wind um, is, is referenced that way. And so that's why I included that. And so here we are in Acts 2. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. This word windstorm is the same word that you would have um, studied when we did this card here. And so you're getting those connections as we go week to week with these words and start, you know, understanding the depth of these verses and, and how it's all connected, which I think is amazing. So 
as we make those connections, there was this note that um, I jumped between um, Matthew Henry and David Guzik's notes. It says, in the Old Testament, we see fire for burnt offerings, which is the spirit of the law, right? We had to do works. There was stuff that we had to do. We, if we sinned, we had to burn certain animals. We had to go through this whole ceremony to do it. So in the Old Testament, we see fire for burnt offerings. Here in the New Testament, we see the Holy Spirit fire, the spirit of grace. No longer are we having to do burnt offerings. Um, Christ was the ultimate offering, ultimate sacrifice. And now we have the Holy Spirit uh, within us when we become Christians. And so we have that spirit of the grace, of grace. Uh, let's see. Wind. We went over the wind one. Um, okay. And then it's saying that this passage here in Acts where it's talking about how the Holy Spirit came um, looking like flames or tongues of fire uh, may be referencing back to John the Baptist speaking in Matthew. And this is actually one of the verses on the card, um, Matthew 3, 11. Um, and this is why I think it's so important to go through and study each one of these verses instead of just like picking and choosing. I would go through and do an in-depth study on each one of these because then you can see the connections um, between them. So here in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, this is John the Baptist speaking. He says, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is someone, meaning Christ, is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And with fire, that same fire that we see here in Acts when the Holy Spirit comes, those tongues of flame of flaming tongues, which you guys, just making connections, super awesome. Um, and so as I went through uh, studying just some of the different, you know, things about the word fire and what fire is and the burning process, um, they talked about um, how fire is uh, purification. Fire burns away what is temporary, leaving only what will last. Yes and amen, is that not our life, right? When we are saved, we are putting off the temporary state of our bodies and taking on something that will last. We are gonna be eternal with Christ. We've got the Holy Spirit in us eternally, forever. <laughs> so this fire burning away what is temporary. And we confess our sins, repent, right? Uh, in the Old Testament, God showed his special pleasure with a sacrifice by lighting the fire himself. So if you go back and look at some of the instances of um, sacrifices in the Old Testament, there were times when they were special and God would actually send lightning or fire down from the heavens um, to ignite that sacrificial fire. Um, and so here we see him doing that but in a unique way. It's not on an animal that he is going to be, you know, sending that fire upon. It is us, the people, right? So in Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was more general. The Holy Spirit is present in the Old Testament, um, but it's more generalized. So it rested on God's people more as a nation. The Holy Spirit was over the people of Israel um, and not in individuals. There were some unique instances of some prophets um, that, you know, had interactions with the Holy Spirit, but it was more of just a general present presence. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit rests upon God's people as individuals. Uh, and here we see that where it settled on each of them. So uh, some of the commentaries I read explain that the, the flames or tongues of fire were like individual flames or tongues that t touched each one of the people there that was present individually. So no longer is the Holy Spirit just a general presence over a group of people. We're individually touched by the Holy Spirit now here in the New Testament. And again, seeing this special pleasure from God um, in the Old Testament, here we're seeing this special pleasure from God upon us. Uh, so the tongues of t fire touch them each individually. Uh, let's see, tongues like flames. So from the spirit, we have the word of God and by him, Christ would speak to the world and he gave the spirit to the disciples so that they'd have the power to proclaim to the world what they knew. Tongues like flames, right? So we think about tongues and speaking. It goes on to talk about, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Um, so we're seeing languages, tongues, all these references of talking. Um, so we have from the Spirit, we have the Word of God. By the Spirit, Christ would speak to the world, giving them 
the word, right? And then he gave the spirit to the disciples so that they would go on to, with their mouth, with their tongue, proclaim to the world what they knew. Tongues like flames, you guys, so much that you can study in this for just, you know, just one word, just fire. You could go on a crazy little tangent like I did. So uh, so that's my plan is to be kind of taking some notes and things, highlighting in this Bible, um, amongst other things. But I like that this one has the sidebar areas where I can take some of those notes directly in here as I'm studying. So a little bit extra study time with today's card. So thankfully the card process itself is pretty quick and easy. Um, to make some more connections, I went ahead and pulled out the Open Journey uh, Road to Emmaus devotional kit. This one is available in digital or physical format. I picked this one because it really, it's, this is talking about the time, um, before Christ's ascension in between his death and resurrection, um, which is leading up to this time that we see of the Pentecost after he has ascended. And so there was a lot of imagery in here and things that I thought went really well with the word fire. There's a lot of like orange tones. There's even um, some of these doves with fire behind them. There was fire imagery all throughout. Uh, and so I thought this kit would really work well. Um, but also in this kit are these nice, um, like big statement kind of collage pieces throughout. So there's some that are on sticker paper. I'm gonna be using one of these today, um, but there's also these that are on cardstock. So again, if you didn't wanna get super messy and pull out all your paints, these could very easily be your background and you're good to go. And so I liked that there were, you know, reds and oranges and yellows. Um, one of these even kind of looked a little bit like, I think it was this one. Yeah, almost kind of looked like it had wings in it a little bit. Like the, where, the way that she went over it with the white brush strokes almost kind of looked like a dove in the background of it. So I would kind of toyed with the idea of using one of these, but in the end, I went with this sticker here. We're gonna use this die cut. I have some of the other elements um, from the kit, but we are going to be just basically doing a really simple background. I pulled out these stamps that had some birds on them. These I will be li linking down below. They are available in her shop um, individually. You don't have to buy the kit to get the stamp here. Um, and so I wanted to include those. And then I thought it would be fun um, to do a little bit of lettering in the background. And so I went and searched out a few different hymns that talked about fire. Um, and so I found a hymn and thought it would be fun to use a dip pen to kind of write that hymn in the background. So we will be doing that. I'll show you how I do that. And then this is a new product from Tim Holt. Not new, sorry. It's a seasonal item from Tim Holtz. And so this is currently available. I'll link it down below is this mummy cloth. And so I really liked just kind of the airy wispiness of this. And so we're gonna color this um, and kind of place it behind the die cut. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we will start putting together this uh, word focus card. Okay, so we're gonna start by just placing this giant uh, textured sticker down as our background. Uh, I had already gone ahead and laid it over the card and cut it down so that it would fit to the front of the card. And you can see I just reveal part of the sticker and stick that down and then review, uh, remove the rest of the backing. That way I don't have any mistakes when placing it down. So here's where I'm going to add that him uh, using a dip pen. So this is a glass, glass dip pen and I'm using Distress Spray Stains as the ink. This is not, I don't think, the recommended ink to use with a dip pen. It's a, it's a little thin, um, but basically there are spirals at the end of this pen that holds on to the ink and allows you to you know, write with the ink that's contained on the glass pen. So I am just very messily and loosely writing out these hymn lyrics. It says, I praise thee, Lord, for cleansing me from sin. Fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. And so I'm not worried about being able to actually read it. This is more just like using a texture stamp in the background of the card. I'm gonna set that aside and work on the other elements that are gonna go on the front of the card. So this is that mummy cloth from Tim Holtz. So I'm just kind of sizing off a piece of this. It's very, very delicate. You can pick it apart, pull it apart, make it messy. Um, I'm working in a splat box to kind of contain the mess. 
and I'm using some crackling campfire distress spray stain. And the idea was I was trying to match the, the orange and reds that are in the kit. But as I'm doing this, I'm kind of questioning it at this point. My son even walked by and was like, mom, that looks like a bloody bandage. That's gross. <laughs> so I was kind of worried that I should have picked a different color at this point, but I'm just going with it. So you can see I'm soaking it up, kind of spraying it with water to get to the ink to move. Uh, it's never going to be like perfectly colored all evenly unless you were to dunk the object into the spray stain itself. So I'm, I'm okay with it being, um, you know, some darker areas and some splatters and things like that. Do be careful when you're drying it. You can overheat this. It's, it is pretty delicate. But once it was dried, it was so much better than I thought it was going to be. It's more of like a rust color and isn't so bloody rag color. <laughs> so it kind of worked out. Um, before I stick that down, I did pull off a few of those bird stamps and I'm going to stamp them in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is a pigment ink, so it takes a little bit longer to dry. And so I'm actually going to use it to emboss rather than using a clear sticky ink. So I'm using black VersaFine ink and then I'm going to emboss over it with clear embossing powder. And this is just going to really intensify that black, but also add some texture. Um, by using just a giant sticker on the background, you don't have texture. It can be very flat. And so I'm wanting to add some other elements um, just to kind of bring in a little bit more texture to it. So you can see I just heat up the embossing powder until it melts and you can kind of see that color change happen. Uh, I find this easier than using black embossing powder. Um, the clear, if it gets anywhere where it's not supposed to be, you can't see it. So it's a little bit um, more full, foolproof. Before I stick that cluster down, I'm adding some black soot distress spray stain splatters to just kind of tie in with the birds. I'm trying to add some contrast um, against the orange shapes in the background. So to adhere mummy cloth, because it is very delicate, there you have some options. You can glue it, but you will be able to see the glue um, you know, in the areas where it's at. You can use a sewing machine and stitch it down, but I'm using a tiny attacher um, just to kind of staple it in a few areas to secure it to the card. I'm not worried about the staple showing through because I do have that other card to attach to the back. Uh, that way it'll cover up the back of the staples glued on uh, that dove and then I just have a stamp block sitting on it just to uh, hold it down while the glue is drying and then I used a we are memory keepers tab punch to punch out one of those tabs from the kit bringing in the colors um, the spray stain that I used with the dip pen was speckled egg and that's also what I'm using here I'm using speckled egg distress oxide ink to stamp the Strong's Concordance number. This is the number that you can look up in the Strong's Concordance and it goes to the word fire. They're done by numbers this way. So I'm gonna leave the card fairly simple on the back there and now we can start assembling everything. So I'm gonna sandwich the tab um, between the two cards. When I started this project, I had fully intended on creating like a uh, like a notebook out of them. So using my cinch binding tool, but I didn't leave myself enough room at the top of the cards. So I'm gonna to have to display them a different way. But for now, I'm just using the tabs as another way to add some color to these cards. So I added a enamel sticker down here. I just felt like it needed something else in this cluster. And I like to work in threes. And so I had two black birds. I needed another black element, it felt like. So the little enamel heart just kind of ties it together. And then now I can adhere the back of the card to the front. And that is gonna be it for Word Study Wednesday for the word fire. Uh, please tag me or use the hashtag if you join in. Um, that way I can check out and see the, what you're creating and uh, how you're studying. It does not have to be on cards like I have here. You can do it in your Bible, in a notebook. Um, just really get creative with this. Uh, again, these past cards will be linked down below in the playlist. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used in the video today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.